I'm just so happy to be here because I was getting so insecure about auditioning for Insecure. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of Black and Excellent, where we talk about all things Black and excellent. So of course we have here with us today, Leonard Robinson. You may know him as Torian on HBO's Insecure. He is amazing on the screen, off the screen. He's also a black belt judo, if I'm in judo, if I'm not mistaken. I'm yeah, afraid. you want to wrestle? I, <laughs> I would say yes, but I'm afraid I'm getting my ass whooped. <laughs> Yeah, so let's jump right into a few questions. How did you land the role of Tori? And I read somewhere that you uh, you auditioned for Insecure a number of times, maybe like seven, eight times. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's probably my, my estimate um, for various roles. I mean, when you audition for the pilot, you know, you there's, there's multiple auditions. So I, I originally tested for Lawrence, okay. uh, which of course became Jay Ellis and then mm -hmm. Shortly after the show got picked up, I auditioned for Chad, uh, who became Neil Brown. And then there was an audition for Quentin, uh, who became Little Rel. I don't know if you remember that uh, season, Molly um, had a relationship with a lawyer from Chicago that became mm -hmm. Little Rel. And then also auditioned for Nathan, who of course became Kendrick. And after all that, then finally landed on Torian, which at that point was just an offer I guess based on all the other auditions that I've had, they're just like, I, he's this, <laughs> I'll have it. Just, if you okay. want it, you have that. How did, so how did you keep your confidence up and like keep the insecurities at bay until you got Torian? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I actually told Issa at the table read when, when I finally got offered Torian, I said, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here because I was getting so insecure about auditioning for Insecure. I'm like, I don't understand what the, where's the joke? I'm not getting it. <laughs> you know, it's just how it goes really, you know, when, you know, what, what, what is for you is for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, you can't put a, you can't try and squeeze something in if it doesn't, if it's not right, you know, and that not only does it, you know, is it not right for you, it's going to be difficult for you to pull off, but it also changes the whole chemistry of the whole show. You know, I think everybody is accurately cast as where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, even Kelly, uh, you know, Natasha Rothwell, she was hired just as a writer and was reading Kelly in the table reads. And then after a while, they were like, she's just so good. This is this is obviously her. Who's going to beat this? Yeah. And then she got the offer to be Kelly. So it's just things work out the way they're supposed to work out, I believe. So if Torian was to have a spinoff, what kind mm -hmm. of show would it be? And like, what are some of the storylines you would like to see him explore? <laughs> <laughs> well, two things I probably could say about that is, uh, and there's a lot of time. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of talk about Kelly getting a spinoff. Mm -hmm. And so I would imagine since we're both, we're all lawyers, it'd probably be all the lawyers spinoffs uh, together in some form or fashion. <laughs> but I was actually joking with, uh, with Prentice Mm -hmm. He said he wanted to see a show where uh, Thug Yoda and Torian have a spinoff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we both, and we both, we have our own law firm, and he wanted to call it Braternies at Law. That would be amazing. What kind of roles or stories would you like to tell in your next role? Well, I, I don't want to speak too much on this right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm currently, you know, in d developing a project right now. Um, hope to bring to light, and I'd like to just talk about you know, a lot of things that we don't necessarily talk about or that we, I mean, a lot of our, a lot of our show, a lot, look, let's be honest. We like to look cool. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> likes to look good. Everybody wants to be cool. I want to talk about the other thing. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about not being, you know, when you're not cool, the, the yeah. struggle, the struggle that you have growing up trying to fit in. So when you hear black excellence, what comes mm -hmm. to mind? I think it's a celebration of all things that we do, that we appreciate and do and we're striving to excel at you know, wherever that is. I think previously it was just celebrating areas that we knew that we were known for and, and known to excel in. And I think now it, it really means like whatever you're doing in your space, like let's celebrate that and let it know that you can be great at this, right? I always used, I used to joke that, you know, Black History Month used to always be like, you know, uh, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Oprah and Michael Jordan. Like that's about the only thing you can celebrate, right. you know, but then expanding it out, just celebrating like however you want to represent or in your space, just be great in that. What's on your morning playlist? 
I've, I've had several in my lifetime. Prince has a song, Beautiful, uh, Loved and Blessed, where it's basically, it's almost like a morning meditation mm -hmm. where he comes on and says, you're beautiful, uh, beautiful um, and blessed. And basically that's my morning playlist right there. That's just one track. Just reminding myself that uh, I'm great, I'm blessed, I'm beautiful, and just being here as is is enough. What motivational quote gets you through tough times? I mean, I guess it depends on the day. You know, mm -hmm. I guess it depends on the day. What kind of motivation do I need? You yeah. know, sometimes it's as simple as left foot, right foot. I think the one I'm radiating towards recently is you are enough. Mm -hmm. You are enough. That's a hard thing, I think, for a lot of people to accept. You know, always think like, I've got to do more. I've got to, you know, sometimes you just have to wait. Sometimes you just have to just prepare. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not about doing more or trying to figure out what new thing you got to put on. Sometimes it's just like, you're just enough. Yeah. Stand in your own, in your own power and your own greatness. So you're a comedian. What inspires your, your joke? You know, oddly enough, when I'm, when I'm doing stand up, a lot of my material comes from, I want to say like pain and trying to figure out the world, just trying to navigate things that, that have really affected me and bothered me and obstacles that, that I've come up with and had to overcome. Um, when I'm at the Groundlings, you know, uh, theater doing sketch and improv, a lot of that is really kind of just finding interesting characters that we haven't seen on stage or on that stage specifically. Going back to like black excellence, like there's a, you know, so many different types of black people we've not seen in, in sketch comedy. And I just keep looking for those, keep mm -hmm. looking for opportunities to find those. I'm currently doing a show right now. There's a, there's a character who's a black country Western singer who sings about life not making any sense. And then I also do a, a, a 90s failed Def Jam stand-up character. Mm -hmm. So I just like bringing just all little facets and little pockets of the, you know obscure types of black people in the sketch comedy form. You mentioned in uh, an interview with Thrive Global uh, that rest <laughs> is a misunderstood tool and underrated. What does self-care look like for you? Yeah. so. This is something I'm just learning a lot about, about rest. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, a lot of times we feel guilty about taking a break or taking, you know, just resting. It's like, we're not machines. As much as I love to think that I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a robot and I can just push through, it's like, I can't, I'm not made like that. And sometimes some of the best things come to you in, that, in those periods of silence and rest. And so that's, that's become a, a big part uh, or of my new self-care regime is allowing myself time to regenerate and process and just relax. So let's jump into a lightning round. So answer these questions as they come to you. Don't give it too much thought. It's just, you know, we're just doing a thing. Okay. How do you feel about squirrels? <laughs> They're hilarious. Are you a cat or a dog person? Uh, I've had a cat, I've had a dog. I probably prefer a dog. You're at home alone and you hear a noise in the house. What do you do next? Go back to sleep. Would you rather good things happen to you or interesting things? I would say interesting things because that could also be good, okay. but a good thing might not be that interesting. Celery is good for you, I guess. <laughs> Celery, I guess, you know, some, some kale is good for you. It's not all that interesting. How much are you going to miss Insecure? Oh, I'm gonna miss it a lot. I'm gonna miss it a lot. I, I mean, things were just starting to, you know, I think get really, really interesting mm -hmm. and and we're leaving. But, you know, I think that's the that's probably the best thing for the show and the legacy of the show is to leave while we're on top. And uh, from what I understand, that was Issa's vision the whole time was to do five seasons. So mission completed for her and she's done way more, I, I'm sure, than anyone expected when the show first started. And so I think it's great that we can, you know, wrap it up and see what's next. When was the last time you cried? Oh, <laughs> uh, like three months ago, all in August. What are you overthinking about right now? Uh, what to eat. <laughs> what do you geek out about? All things technology. How do you procrastinate? Uh, by doing quote unquote research and, and just watching TV and movies all day. Since this is the last season, the final season of Insecure, what's next for Leonard Robinson? Uh, well, I'm gonna continue doing stand-up, continue doing sketch and improv at the Groundlings Theater. And just like we talked about uh, earlier before, um, you know, I'm currently in, a, in the process of trying to develop, you know, some of my own projects to bring to light. So hopefully soon we can have something else to report on that, but that, you know, those things take time. Yeah. And so that's what I'm pursuing right now. Mm -hmm.